Let's look at one more example using the first derivative test. Let's find the local extrema of the graph of g of x, which is given by x cubed minus 9x squared plus 27x minus 30. So just like last time when we're looking for local extrema, the first thing we want to think about is critical numbers. And in order to think about critical numbers, we also want to think about the domain of our function here. In this case, the domain of this function is negative infinity to positive infinity because g of x is a polynomial. So most, I will say most of the examples that we look at, most of the problems that we're dealing with in this particular section will be polynomial. So domain will rarely give you a hard time uh, in this section. We may see it come up a little bit more in sections 4.2 or 4.4, and I'll, I'll point that out once we get there. So the domain negative infinity to positive infinity, we don't really need to worry about it. So we can start finding the critical numbers. We need the derivative first of all. So g prime of x will be 3x squared minus 18x plus 27. And for critical numbers, as always, we want to find places where our derivative is equal to 0 and places where our derivative does not exist. So if I take my derivative and set it equal to 0, we'll have 3x squared minus 18x plus 27 is equal to 0. And then we can go ahead and solve this equation. So uh, we've got a quadratic equation. I think it's probably easiest to solve by factoring. And all of these have a common factor of 3. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. And that'll leave me with x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. And then if I think about two numbers which multiply to be positive 9, add to be negative 6, those would be negative 3 and negative 3. So I can factor this. 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3 is equal to 0. And then we'll take each factor and set it equal to 0. So x minus 3 equals 0 gives me x equals 3. And if I take this second x minus 3, set it equal to 0, well, we'll end up with the exact same thing. So we've got x equals 3 as a critical number. We're going to hold on to that idea right now. Remember, the other case I need to think about is places where my derivative does not exist. So I'm going to look at the equation for my derivative. In this case, g prime is a polynomial. So I'm going to make a note of that. g prime is a polynomial, which means that g prime exists everywhere which means that there are no x values where g prime does not exist. So we only have the one single critical number here. We've got x equals 3. Once we find our critical numbers, we're going to go ahead and construct our number line next. So here we've got g prime. The critical number that we found was 3. Um, and then above 3, again, why was x equals 3 important? What was the behavior of the derivative at that point? Well, I can look at it and say, well, we found that by taking the derivative and setting it equal to 0. So right above that 3, I'm going to put a little 0 so that I know, hey, g prime is equal to 0 at this particular x value. Um, it would be really helpful if we were sketching the graph of this function. So now I need to take a number on either side of x equals 3 and plug that into my derivative g prime of x. So just so that I have it right in front of me, I'm going to go ahead and copy g prime of x just so that I don't make a mistake here. So if I start on the left-hand side of x equals 3, I might pick x equals 2, x equals 1. I'm going to go ahead and work with x equals 0 just because it makes the computations really easy for this problem. So g prime of 0 will be 3 times 0 squared minus 18 times 0 plus 27. Here I should have 0 minus 0 plus 27, and I end up with a positive 27. Remember, it's always the sign that we're interested in. So here we have a positive 27. So I'm going to put some plus signs to the left of x equals 3. And then we need a number on the right-hand side of x equals 3. So we could pick x equals 4, 5, 6, uh, whatever you prefer. I'm going to work with 4. So we'll take 
x equals 4 and plug that into g prime. That should look like 3 times 4 squared minus 18 times 4 plus 27. And let me grab my calculator just so that I don't make a silly mistake. 3 times 4 squared here I'm going to have 48 minus 18 times 4 gives me 72 plus 27. So if I have 48 minus 72 plus 27 I end up with a positive 3. And again, it's the sign that we're really interested in. We ended up with a positive three, so I'm gonna put some plus signs on the right-hand side there to indicate, hey, we have a positive, uh, our derivative was positive on that right-hand side. So now I'm gonna look at what's going on around x equals three. Because for these first derivative tests, we wanna look and see, uh, is there a sign change in our first derivative? And in this case, we don't have a sign change in our first derivative. It's positive on the left-hand side and it's positive on the right-hand side, which means if we were to go ahead and sketch a graph of this function, it would be increasing on the left-hand side and it would be increasing on the right-hand side of x equals three. So what that tells me is that I do not have any local uh, extrema. If I had had one, it would have shown up here as a critical number, but the only critical number that I found was x equals three, and we didn't have a sign change there. We need to change either from positive to negative or negative to positive in order to have a local extreme value at that particular critical number. So what this tells me at the end of this problem is that I actually have no local extreme values say no local extrema because we're looking for that sign change and this is a really good example that illustrates that we can't just assume that because one side is positive the other side is going to be negative we need to make sure that we check both sides of our critical numbers with our first derivative to make sure that there's a sign change before we jump to any conclusions and say there are, you know, there's a local minimum or a local maximum because in this case, well, that just wasn't true. We, we don't have any local extrema on the graph of this function.